This is One Man's Family. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today, transcribed, we present Chapter 2, Book 71, entitled, Two Lost Barbers Begin to Find Happiness. It's vacation time at the Sky Ranch. The only ones not present are Paul, who had to remain in Seacliff on business, and his niece Joan, 16, who's staying at the family home with him and has her first part-time job. But in addition to the family up at the Sky Ranch is Roberta Evans at Mother Barber's special invitation. It's been a lively day. And now at the Sky Ranch, it's early evening, with deepening purple shadows in the canyons and the full moon taking over where the sun left off. It's quiet now. Quiet, except for the approaching and receding sound of Skippy's motor scooter, which has traveled steadily around the ranch all day long. Here he comes now. Grown-ups have their moments of happiness, but there's nothing like the sustained ecstasy you'll see on the face of a boy driving his first gasoline motor. For 11-year-old Skippy, today has been a jewel of a day, a period of undiminishing bliss. It was part of Barber's idea that the driveway would be a good, safe place for the boy to ride, a suggestion which he now bitterly regrets. The noise of the motor has driven him to a far corner of the side porch, where he is waiting to enjoy the evening quiet. If, by chance, someone eventually sends Skippy to bed. That's Henry's voice now. Fanny! Oh, oh, Fanny! Yes, Henry? Fanny, would you come out here a moment? Uh, Motor scooters. What is it, Henry? Isn't there in this household a specified bedtime for children? Now, Henry. That scooter, is it never going to stop? I don't hear it, Henry. He's still riding it. Nine hours and 17 minutes now. Nine blessed hours and 17 minutes. I have never in my life seen such stick to it of this family, such uh, such singleness of purpose. Oh, my dear, isn't that a quality you greatly admire? Huh? Stick to itiveness. Circling around the hammock. Did you see him when he was circling around my hammock? I thought the thing would only work on the driveway, but no, it can climb hills, weave in and out among the trees. The idea. Letting a little thing like that bother you. I don't mind a minimum of turmoil and confusion. I don't even mind a certain amount of bedlam. When you have a household full of young children, you have to expect a certain amount of bedroom. But when evening comes, it really ought to calm down. And what am I supposed to do about it? Huh? I'm not going to tell Clifford what time he should send Skippy to bed. But the triplets will never get to sleep. Well, we'll let Jack and Betty worry about that. Why don't you go for a walk? I've been for a walk. I've had two walks. Well, good. I strolled down the wood trail for a quarter of a mile, and what happened? I leaped aside just in time to avoid being run over. Henry. Huh? My dear, I'm not going to do your dirty work for you. You want someone to speak to Clifford? Then you do it, not I. Oh, Grandfather! Grandfather! I'm out here on the side porch. Oh, honestly, you men. Don't you ever see things like this? Huh? The children push these magazines off on the floor. Yeah. Don't you ever see things like this, Henry? Uh, yes, 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 I noticed that. I thought at the time we trained our children to be neat. I don't know what's going to happen to this generation. It would be so simple when you see magazines scattered about this way to simply pick them up. Grandfather? Oh, hi. Hi, Grandmother. Hello, Margaret. Want me to help you? Why, thank you. You can get that one under the sunshades. Okay. Grandfather. Yes, my dear? Have you got any influence with Skippy? Is the noise beginning to bother you too, Margaret? What noise? Huh? Golly, he always share things. Don't you think so? The girl can ride a bicycle. She can run a motor, motor scooter. Now I think Uncle Clifford should let him be so selfish to you, Grandfather. But Margaret will be dark any moment now. Too dark to ride. But he's got a headlight on it. Huh? Sure, there's a swell headlight. Or spotlight, really. No matter how dark it gets, you can see everything fine. Margaret, where is your Uncle Clifford? I don't know. He was with Roberta Evans just after dinner. Well, hunt down Miss Evans, and when you find Clifford, bring him to me. Oh, Grandfather, I know you'd do it for me. Gee, I'm lucky to be your favorite. Huh? You've built up false hopes, young lady. That isn't what I had in mind at all. Give me a kiss right here on my cheek. <laughs> yes, yes. And I'll give you one right there on your cheek. There. Now I'll get Uncle Cliff for you. Uh, understand you're not going to ride tonight, Margaret. We're going to get things quieter down. Uh-huh. Well, I'll get him anyhow. You know why the magazines were scattered around, Grandmother? No, I can't imagine. There was a magazine fight, that's why. <laughs> oh, hi, Mom. Hello, darling. Where are you off to? I'm running an errand for Grandfather. He asked me to a special. 
pretty indeed. Hey, you two, don't you want to ride out here? Yeah. Yes, Hazel, thank you. Oh, Mother, I was going to pick those up. There's a small riot out here before dinner. It's good exercise. That's why I'm in better physical condition than your father. I bend over often and pick things up. Yeah. Sit down, Hazel. Sit down. Thank you. Oh, Mother, are you going in? Yes, I can help Betty and Nicolette with the older girls. I think the little children are just about put away. Well, I'll see. And Henry. Yeah? If you talk to Clifford, see that you're diplomatic. It's his affair, you know, not ours. Yes, yes, ma'am. Good night, Hazel. Good night, Mother. You know, I've been trying to get you alone all day. Uh, so? Uh, uh, didn't I hear the phone ringing a little while ago? Yes. Paul called to say he and Joan would be out from the city tomorrow. Yeah, Joan should be out here now. How Paul ever talked Claudia and Nicholas into letting her work... I didn't come out here to discuss Joan, Father. I want to ask you to do something about my own family. Huh? Would you please, for my sake, just ignore Margaret for a little while and concentrate on Betty's girls? Huh? Father, it's so easy to spoil a youngster Margaret's age. She is... Well, she's in a difficult period anyway, and if she gets the idea that she can always get special favor from you, it makes it harder for Dan and me. We're having quite a time with her. You're having quite a time with Margaret. Wait, Hazel, what do you mean? You're just addled, aren't you? Huh? Father, Betty's feelings are hurt. Huh? What about? Why, you spend more time with Margaret than with all six of Betty's girls, and it hurts. And I don't blame her a bit for being hurt. What are you talking about? Did you go up and see the triplets today when they had their bath? No, not today. You came back from town with a sack of candy for Margaret. Well, the other children like candy, too. Sharon Ann likes candy. Yes, yes, I, I thought of that afterwards. I... I'll find him, Grandfather. I'll talk to you later, Father. You've just got to stop indulging her so. Oh, here comes Skippy. Look there, Grandfather. Just look at that spotlight. Hi, Hazel. Hey, you know, when I was a kid and got my first bicycle, I rode it for about 18 straight hours. I can remember exactly how Skippy feels. When you finally get something you wanted desperately, you, you just can't seem to get enough of it. Oh, he's really a happy boy. Come with me now, Margaret. To Grandfather and Uncle Claire. Margaret. It's all right, Hazel. Let Margaret. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, run along, my dear. Run along with your mother. Oh, God. Margaret. Okay. Good night, Grandfather. Good night, Uncle Claire. Good night. Night. Uh, Dad. Dad, in these last 11 years, have I been just a, a bum? Huh? It's a doggone thing, Dad. I, I don't see how I could have a boy like Andy. Who? Andy. Clifford and Andrew Barber. Skippy's out as soon as I can sell him the idea. Anyhow, how could I have sent him to live with Nicky and Claudia and neglected him the way I have? Apparently, I... Well, who, who says you've neglected him? Perfectly obvious, isn't it? I come out of the hospital and find I have a son named Skippy. No other name, just Skippy. And where is he? Living, living with my sister. Now, Clifford... Uh... I've had the worst time getting acquainted with him, Dad. We can hardly talk to each other. I told him the other day his name was Andrew Clifford Barber, and you know what he said? He said, Andrew was all right, maybe, but he'd rather be called Skippy. He doesn't want any part of Clifford. Can you imagine Skippy? Yes. Maybe I'll never remember these 11 years that have gone out of my life. From a few things I've picked up, I almost hope I don't. Dad, just how bad was I? Well... <clears throat> I grant you, you weren't too interested in Skippy Clifford. Yeah, all well, the evidence seems to point in that general direction. Well, I'll make up for it now, you can bet your life. Well, don't overdo it. How do you mean? Well, in trying to make up for past wrongs, you can do just as much harm being overindulgent. You mean with Andy? Yeah. Oh, oh yes, Andy. I, I'll get used to the name, no doubt. Uh, but, as I was saying, I think children actually like rules. A certain amount of uh, discipline. For instance, if there's a specified uh, bedtime. Uh, well, a youngster knows that his parents care, don't you see? The child who runs wild stays up half the night, does as he pleases. Well, Clifford, in his secret heart, he knows his parents are either stupid or that they just don't care about him. Yeah, that makes sense? Well, I think so. Sir, so, if you're going to be a good father, Clifford, you must represent both love and authority. It's your responsibility to see that the boy gets a sound night's sleep, good food, good moral training, and has the proper things to wear. And that he doesn't annoy other people too much with his motor scooter. Huh? Oh, sure, Dad, I get it. I'll quiet things down right now. <laughs> well, it wasn't that entirely clear. Yeah, I know, Dad. I've been watching you trying to find a quiet corner. Excuse me. Hey, 
Hey, Skippy. Hi. Watch me stop it. Now watch. Uh-oh. Killed the motor. Skip, um... Yes, sir. Did you notice my headlight? Boy, isn't that something? Look, turn it. See? Oh, yeah, it's pretty wonderful. Yeah, it's swell. The whole thing's swell, Dad. Dad? Did... Did you say Dad? Sure. Gee, I only hope it'll look just as good and shiny to me tomorrow morning when I wake up as it did today. Say, Dad. Yes, Kim? Look, if you want me to be called Andrew, Andrew Clifford Barber, well, that's okay, Dad, if if that's what you want. Skip. Wow. Well, that's fine, only probably nobody will ever... Well, everybody thinks of you as Skippy. Well, I just wanted you to... To know it's okay with me. What time do I have to go to bed? To bed? Could I stay up until maybe not later than midnight? Well, you see, um, that isn't the most silent motor scooter in the United States, and I I hate to mention this, but today when you were circling around your grandfather's hammock, I, I think it bothered him a little. It did? And quite a lot. So, um, why don't we call it off right now and, and quiet down for the night? Now? I think it'd be a good idea, yeah. You mean I have to? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, fella, I, I think you ought to. Gee whiz, is that an order? Oh. Uh, yes, I uh, I guess that's what you'd call it, uh, a definite order. Okay, Dad. I'll just start it up and run around the house twice more and then put it in the garage. Uncle Cliff, couldn't I ride it just once, please? Oh, hey, Margaret, you're in your nightgown. Come on, Uncle Cliff, I've been asking Skippy all day if I couldn't ride it just once. He's selfish. Ah, oh, you don't know how to work it. Well, I could learn. Uncle Cliff, Skippy, I could learn right away. You watch me. Leave it alone. Skippy, let me. Oh, hey, kids, hey, 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 what kind of business is this? Dad, I'm not going to ever let her ride it. She'd run it right into a tree. I'm not gonna. What selfish, Skippy? <laughs> it's nice and quiet now. Lovely night, isn't it? Yeah, hi, Dad. Uh, it might stay that way. Skippy's going to bed down his pride and joy. Oh, is that so? Well, he's had a nice long day with us, yes. Well, I haven't even touched it. He won't let me even get married, Grandfather. Here, here, Margaret. What are you doing out barefoot in your night clothes? Well, I just wanted one little ride on the scooter before I go to sleep. That's all, Grandfather. Just one little ride. Um, start it up, son. Uh, Grandfather, come over here and let me speak to you a minute. Huh? Yes, yeah, 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 Margaret. What is it? See, Dad, what you do is click this right here at ignition and step on the good old starter. Well, uh, do you have to choke it? I can do it. I can do it. You just adjust these handles. Now, oh, boy, isn't it a kick when a motor starts? There isn't anything like a motor. Golly. Just listen to that, Dad. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep, that's pretty sweet. It's about the sweetest sound there is. Yeah, it sure is, Skip. It's... Oh, boy. Uh-huh. Look at this big soft seat. When I get a few months older, I could take a long trip and be perfectly comfortable. You could tie a puff tin on here and an axe and pots and pans. Sure enough, you could, Skip. Dad? Yeah? Just between you and me, if you want to start right now calling me Andy, that's okay. Well, I... I just might do that one of these days. It's a fine name, Andrew. I... I've always liked it. Oh, uh, Clifford. Uh, yes, Dad? Uh, do you suppose that Skippy would mind giving Margaret a ride on that thing around the house a few times? You mean ride double, Dad? Why not? There's room, isn't there? Yeah, yes, sir. there's plenty of room. i tell you what I'll do. I'll take her around the house just 15 times, no more. Five times. How about six, Dad? Six times. Make a seven. Here you go, Margaret. Up you go. Oh, hang on. I've been strolling all day, and now I've got a license to take passengers. Hold on tightly, Margaret. I will. Thanks, Grandfather. Thank you very much. (laughs) You know something? He started calling me Dad. Huh? Skippy? Well, what did he call you? I don't know, but I never heard him call me Dad before. That you, Hazel? No, Margaret's disappeared. Where in the world is she? Um, riding with Skippy. Riding with Skippy? But Cliff, I, 
I sent her to bed. But at that, maybe you better get a jacket for her. A jacket? What she got on? Uh, just her nightgown, I'm afraid. Uh, honestly, whose idea was this? Dad, where are you going? Hey, Dad, come back here. Hazel wants to know whose idea this was. <laughs> Later that same evening, when everything was really put to bed, that's about 8.30 or quarter to nine at the Sky Ranch, Clifford and Roberta Evans just naturally drifted together out under the moon in the patio. Oh, so you did come, Clifford. Were you expecting me? I thought maybe you'd gone to bed, but I was hoping. No, just sitting here looking up at that wonderful moon and doing a little hoping myself. Yeah. I've been up saying goodnight to Andy. Skippy to most folks. I know. He's worn himself out with that new scooter. And he's made his father very happy, too, hasn't he? Mm, yes, I am glowing a little. For the first time in my life, I've begun to sense the meaning of being a father. Oh? Just tonight, it kind of came over me as I watched him playing. The look of utter bliss on his face, the way he suddenly began calling me Dad, it was... Oh, it was pretty wonderful. I heard him. When he said Dad, there was pride in it. He was as happy as you. Was he, do you think? Maybe it's wishful thinking, but... I feel this is the beginning of a real father-son relationship between us. I'm so glad for you both. He's needed you so desperately. Not that your sister and brother-in-law haven't loved you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. <sighs> ah, yes. Peace at the Sky Ranch. <laughs> Finally. After all, the kids have been put away for the night. <laughs> oh, but they had such a glorious day. And what a wonderful place for them. You're really a very lucky man. You know that, Clippy? What? It's such a big family, and all of you so close. That's a rare thing in this world. Is it so rare? Is it? I don't think you realize. It was a great experience to see your family in action when you had your accident. The love and devotion and complete selflessness was heartwarming. Yeah, everybody was swell. And getting a little personal, one Roberta Evans was right in there pitching, too. Pure selfishness. I had my reasons. Oh? Would you like to tell me what they were? I would not. <laughs> Anyway, the important thing is you're all right. You're here close beside me and happy. Thanks to Skippy. Not Skippy alone. Oh? Though you had to be told. In fact, when there's a day I know I'm not going to see you, I feel pretty doggone miserable. It's the moon, Clifford. It affects men's senses. Moon has nothing to do with it. I feel the same way when it's foggy. Nice talk. Say some more. <laughs> and how obvious can a girl be? Oh, but you must know how I feel. Do I? I'm not so sure. Oh, you're kidding. But, you know something funny? What? You remember when Paul first brought you to the hospital and I thought you were his girl? Yeah. I still haven't got that idea quite out of my head. Clifford! Even now it flashes in my mind. Boy, what a swell girl for Paul. And I get a tinge of jealousy. I don't want him to have you at all. But he hasn't, not ever. Before your accident, I didn't even know Paul. And you made love to me like... Like... Like what? Well, never mind if you don't remember. Well, was I a better prospective husband before or since my loss of memory? Why do you have that inferior feeling where Paul is concerned? I've noticed it over and over. Well, maybe it's because he's the oldest and because he has so much more sense and balance. I don't know. He has many fine qualities, of course. But so have you. Paul is Paul and what he has is his. But by the same token, you have an entity, too, that gives you a personality and a charm that's all yours. Hmm. You're awful good for me. You know that? Am I? Yes, you are. And you know something else? Yes, I do. I want you to kiss me. You amazing girl. That's exactly what I was going to say. Ah, yes. And again, yes. How can a person have all your sense and and be so beautiful, too? Moonlight is very kind of... Uh-oh. Hi. Oh, oh, it's you two. Yeah, that's right. Hello, Jack. Oh, I didn't know you were out here. I just came out to get a little fresh air. What you doing? Oh, <clears throat> just just talking. Yeah? Ah, we just got the last of the brood in the hay. Boy, by the time you've wrestled several assorted daughters into bed, you've accomplished something. But a labor of love. Oh, yeah. You get one settled and another one wants a drink of water. Okay, you get the water. 
Then another wants one. Put a fresh glass. <laughs> now you've got through that routine. They're known as the water routine. And you heave a sigh of relief. They're down. You start to sneak out. Up pipes a voice. Daddy, you didn't kiss me goodnight. <laughs> <laughs> That's known as the goodnight kiss routine, I suppose. <laughs> That's it. There's several more. I'm too hot. I'm too cold. <laughs> Mary Lou kick me. I want you to hold me a little while. That's a tough one. Well, how do you solve it? Solve it? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they'd all be so tired tonight they'd drop dead in their bed. Mm, there speaks inexperience. It works that way sometimes, but when you count on it, exercise and overdoing act like so much benzodrine. Let's face it, kids are unpredictable, and that's all there is to it. Well, uh, Skippy went off to bed without a word. <laughs> Look who's talking, the amateur. He does sound a little smug, doesn't he? <laughs> I could keep my kids quiet with a motor scooter, too. But you can't buy something like that every day. Not in stay solvent. <laughs> Has everybody gone to bed except us? Mm, seems like it. Well, that's country life. After you have dinner and get the younger generation to bed, there's not much to do except get in the sack yourself, I guess. Yeah, guess so. Nicky's got some new horses. See him yet? Oh, isn't that Palomino a beauty? Sure is. You see it, Cliff? Uh, uh-huh. Hey, come to the party. Oh, the, the horses, yeah. Am I boring you? Oh, now I get it. I, I think I'll be running along. You going to bed? It's early yet. Well, I, I think I feel a cold draft. Good night. Good night, fella. Good night, Jack. Uh, not too late now, children. <laughs> That's a younger brother for you. He's cute. I wish I had some brothers, like Jack and Paul. Oh, yeah, Paul. I wonder how Paul's getting along back in town playing chaperone to Joan. I think brother Paul bit himself off a large hump this time. <laughs> Yes, I know, Joan, but isn't it a little late to be going to a movie? Well, it isn't nine yet, Paul. Besides, Ken had to work late. That's why he couldn't get here sooner. Oh. Uh, you met this Ken at the airport, huh? Yeah. We had lunch together a couple of times. He knows you. Says he's helped to service your plane a lot of times. Oh, uh, Ken Arthur, kind of stocky with a crew cut. Uh, well, I'll probably remember him when I see him. I'm, I'm presuming he's a nice young fellow. Oh, sure, he's okay. How old is he? Oh, 21 or 22. Isn't that a little old for you, honey? Well, I can take care of myself, Paul. Besides, he's a lot more naive than a lot of the kids I know in school. Maybe that's why I kind of like him, because he doesn't try to act smart and be hip the way most of the kids around my age do. Oh, I see. Well, I have complete faith in you, Joan. You know that. I know you do. Do you think I'd do anything to make you lose that? Oh, gosh, I'm so happy with my job down at the airport and living here with you that nothing in the world matters but keeping everything just like it is. And if you don't want me to go, Paul, I'll, I'll tell him to go peddle his papers. Well, of course I want you to go. I want you to have as much fun and be just as happy as you possibly can all summer. It's just that, well, I made myself responsible for you and we don't want to let Nikki and Claudia down, do we? The important thing to me is that I wouldn't let you down. Well, I think we understand each other, and that's all that's necessary, isn't it? Yes, Paul. So you like what you're doing down at the airfield, huh? Oh, it's wonderful. And everybody's so swell to me in the traffic office. Of course, I know a lot of that is because you're such a big shot down there. Not at all. They like you very much. I was talking to Creighton yesterday, and he said you were not only willing, but intelligent. Really? Why, you're not surprised, are you? You know all that about yourself? Now you're getting a chance to prove it. That's why I thought your idea for this summer was so good and talked Claudia and Nikki into letting you do it. You've got an awful lot of personality and warmth, honey, and a lot of love that you're dying to let out. It takes a little time to learn how to do it, but when you learn how, you're going to find that there's a lot of it there for your parents, too. I don't know, Paul. I do. And once you find yourself able to give love to those who deserve it, you'll discover you're getting it back a hundredfold. And there's where you find happiness. By loving and being loved. It would be easy if everybody was like you. That's fine. When you feel like telling me you love me, tell me. Don't be afraid of it. And once you've broken down that fear of loving wholeheartedly, the first thing you know, you'll be transferring it to all your family. To all the good people who love you so very much. I, I hope so, Uncle Paul. I know it. You just said something that made me very happy. That you make things clear? No. You just call me 
Uncle Paul, did you realize it? Did I? I didn't know it. I, I wonder what made me do that. I wonder. Gee, I wish Ken weren't coming over. I'd much rather sit here and talk to you. Oh, you'll have lots of time to talk to me. You go out and see a movie. <laughs> about all he thinks about is airplanes. Well, I can think of worse things. Well, the date is here at last. <laughs> I'll go let him in. Bring him to the library. Yes, I will. Hi, Joan. Oh, come on in. Oh, yeah, sure. Come on in the library for a minute. Oh, hello there. Ken, you know Paul? My Uncle Paul? I've seen you around the airport a lot, Mr. Barber. Yes, of course. Hi, Ken. Oh, just fine, thanks. We got time to sit down for a while? When is the break of the movie? Do you know, Ken? Well, I just called before I left the house. It's at 9.20. Oh, we got plenty of time. We're just going down to that neighborhood theater anyway. Well, that's what I thought. Of course, if there's something else you'd rather see... Oh, no, no, that's well. Sit down. Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, you live near here, Ken? Oh, not so very far. I don't live in Seacliff, though. Sure get a swell view from up here. The big moon out tonight, shining over the bay. Clear as a bell. Is that so? Well, I think I'll take a turn around the block a little later and have a look-see. I told Joan I didn't know whether you'd remember me or not, Mr. Barber. Well, of course I remember you. You've worked on my plane a lot of times. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> sure a beauty, too. I'm just starting to take flying lessons from one of your men down there. Oh, fine. Well, you'll have to come up with me sometime. Oh, gosh, that'd be great. I told you Paul would take you up. How many hours have you got now? Oh, only three. I don't have much time, and uh, it's kind of expensive. Who'd you say you're taken from? Mr. Hughes. Oh, yes, uh, Tom. Well, I'll talk to him next time I'm down here. Check up on you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many hours do you suppose you've had in the air, Paul? Oh, I have many idea, honey. Well, starting in 1917 and right on through the last war would add up to plenty. You can bet on that, Joan. How did you know so much about my uncle? Oh, all us grease monkeys uh, know the record of every flyer down there. I wish you wouldn't call yourself a grease monkey. I think it sounds terrible. Well, they're pretty valuable people, whatever they call themselves. Flyers put a lot of trust in you, fellas. Hey, uh, you better watch the time. You don't want to miss your show. Oh, yeah. yeah I think we'd better get going, Joan. Okay, I'm all ready. I've got my coat right here. Here, here, let me help you with it. Oh, thanks. All set? Yep. Well, good night, Ken. It's nice to see you. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Barber. Good night. Good night, sir. I turned your bed before I came down, Paul, and I put out some fresh pajamas for you. Oh, thank you, Joan. I'll peek in when I get home. I won't wake you if you're asleep, but we won't be late. Fine. Enjoy yourself. Good night. Good night, Uncle Paul. just heard Chapter 2, Book 71 of One Man's Family, written, produced, and transcribed under the direction of Carlton E. Morse. Chapter 3, entitled, Roberta Evans Begins to Sense a Rival, will come to you next week at this same hour. family comes to you from California. This is NBC, the National...